Brian, you were just at the first CCAT conference in Tokyo last week. If I see correctly, it is the main stage where Japan positioned itself with UN organizations and key African stakeholders with their commitment to African development. Which of the sessions that you attended impressed you most? Uh, was it the, the session around the role of the private sector in African development? Indeed, Pascal, that was a key session that I that I wanted to attend, given, as you know, from my work with the platform on the private sector and, and, and moving forward into the post-215. And uh, a, a very good session, again, with uh, initially chaired by the president of the World Bank, and he was joined after the first half an hour by the UN Secretary General, together with African businessmen from, from West and uh, East Africa. And they all spoke, I think, passionately about the importance of bringing the private sector into development in Africa. But also what impressed me was the uh, linkages to the agricultural sector. They had uh, from, uh, from, uh, from Ghana, they had Samuel Adu who works in processing in Ghana. And he said, you know, really, he said, agriculture and agribusiness is going to underpin agricultural and rural development in, in, in Ghana and underpin, underpin the, uh, the uh, development of, of Ghana. And, and he made an impassioned uh, plea for uh, supporting the, 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 the private sector and the small private sector sector in Africa. Now, this is by uh, the, the, the Secretary General of the, U, the United Nations, who highlighted, and this is a phrase that I wrote down at the time, the transformative power of the private sector and the need for increased responsible investment and policies towards the agricultural sector. And he spoke uh, about what the United Nations is doing with the UN Global Compact on developing guidelines for the private sector. He spoke, and this was echoed by the president of the World Bank, he worked that United Nations, and that includes IFAD, UNCTAD, and FAO, are doing with the World Bank to develop the principles for responsible agricultural investment. So there was a strong push uh, for that. And in the audience, we had the, the president uh, of, of Uganda, and he, from the floor, emphasizing Again, the role of the, the private sector, the importance of creating the, uh, the right support for infrastructure, and his commitment in Uganda to creating the enabling environment for the private sector. So I was impressed by the, the unanimity of, of that comment from the, from, from the World Bank and the IFC as well were, on, were, were talking, from the uh, UN, from the World Bank, from the member countries. Uh, this quality in, in, in working with the private sector and involving the private sector. As the UN Secretary General said, he said, look, you know, official de development assistance, ODA, is not going to be sufficient to meet the development needs of Africa. You need to bring the private sector into the discussion. Thank you very much. I, I hear there's probably something that grows together what belongs together in the first place. And, um, there was also an interesting uh, session, I believe, uh, on the post-2015 agenda with uh, Da Silva, the Director General of FAO, who uh, delivered, I have it here on, on paper, five uh, interesting messages going from food security and nutrition should remain at the core of the post-2015 agenda and uh, goes further to that food security to be sustainable would need to take a a harder look at our food production and consumption systems and so forth. And finally, as uh, number five, um, he talks about small producers, traders, youth, and all these groups as being critical agents of change, where investment would have to be geared towards to. Obviously, all these groups are people that are part of the equation right now. But what would make them change agents if large-scale investment, for example, used them as hindrance to change or that would simply bypass them? Why change agents? 
Let me just go back and again, you picked up on an important theme of that session, which was the importance of understanding the, the value chain for, for agricultural production. And indeed, uh, uh, De Silva from the Director General of FAO, uh, FAO mentioned this, as did the EFAB president, Kanayo Nwanzi, who was in the, in the same session. Both highlighted the, the role of, in the, in the case of the EFAB president, the small farmer as a business person and emphasize that we should not be seeing as the, the smallholder as a, a beneficiary of aid, that smallholder, him or her, and obviously emphasis on, on gender, uh, is a, a business person. De Silva followed that up by highlighting the importance of linking that smallholder into the value chain through the traders, through the middlemen, uh, in, in, a responsible, in a responsible manner. Um, I don't think they're seen as, as a hindrance. I think it was, the point that was being made is that they are seen as very much part of the essential equation if you want to involve the smallholder. And both the Silver and, and Kayo, Nwanzi from IFAD, emphasized the importance of giving support and investment to the smallholder, being the largest source of employment and the biggest source of production in Africa. So I think they were emphasizing um, a, a message that small producers, traders, youth are part of this equation for rural development and for economic growth in, in Africa. And it was interesting, it was important that they both spoke about this in the post-215 agenda because, you know, we're not yet seeing the post-215 agenda focusing specifically on the agricultural sector. It, it recognizes the importance of of the rural sector, it recognizes the importance of food production, but it hasn't specifically talked about the rural sector in Africa as that engine of growth. And you know, as well, what was also interesting in, the, in that intervention in the post post 250 discussion, this importance of a system and the importance of addressing the issue of food losses and diet. So that's issues that Professor Tim Lang raised at the Global Donor Platform's uh, annual meeting in The Hague in January, emphasizing the, uh, in parts of Africa, he, and he referenced Malawi, the issues of obesity in Africa, and the importance of, of diet, the importance of growing nutritious crops, and ensuring that those crops better nutrition for, for young children in Africa. The importance of nutrition was stressed very much by uh, the World Food Programme. Executive Director Mr. Cousins was, was at the meeting. She emphasized strongly the, the importance of the, the first found days and the importance of the nutrition requirements of children at that age. So some of the themes that we've been hearing coming out of the post-215 uh, working groups, particularly in the Rome-based agencies, were repeated in, in that session. And, and to that broader audience. Brian, you also chaired a open discussion session at the side event of the PRI of the uh, Principles of Responsible Agriculture Investment, uh, the interagency working between FAO, IFAD, UNCTAD, World Bank, all around the impact of investment on African agriculture and the principles. There was evidence presented from field research and discussed uh, implications for policy as well as the way forward. Uh, maybe you can tell the audience a little bit what the key outcomes of the prior field implementation were so far, what was discussed, what are the next steps identified in the discussion round, and maybe also the implications for the CFS in October, which is uh, going towards the intended endorsement of the PRI. As you know, since the, the principles for responsible agriculture investment were launched at the UN in 2009, uh, that interagency working group, of which EFAD is part, has been following what's been called a twin track approach. On the one hand, it's been piloting and researching the issues of responsible agriculture investment. And on the other hand, the second track, taking part and feeding that information into the CFS consultation on responsible agriculture investment. And this uh, side event that uh, we had at the, the uh, at ECAD 5 was an opportunity for the, the, the interagency working group to profile some of the, the research findings that were, were coming out of the work. 
uh, what we've been doing, for example, with 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 or rather what UNCTAD has been doing, has been taking the prior principles and retrofitting them to uh, existing investments. So you know, when we talk about the principle about transparency and involvement of local stakeholders, they've developed a questionnaire whereby uh, farmers, both in the uh, areas of agriculture investment in particular zones of Africa, and those farmers who are outside those particular areas of investment are asked questions about the success of the investment what the, and what the problems have been. And for those smallholders who are outside the investment area, what have been the implications for, for their involvement in the, in the program? So we had an opportunity to, to present those findings. Uh, we started off the side event with a presentation from the EFAD supported smallholder uh, vegetable oils project in Uganda, uh, where the project manager uh, came up from Uganda. And Connie, uh, she made a very good presentation of how smallholders have been working as, as outgrowers, providing quality uh, oil into the main processes. Uh, and the improvements that they've seen in uh, income over the last years with, with that program. Uh, the World Bank also provided innovation on the research that they've been uh, conducting in, in African investment. And particularly, we're looking at the, the conditions for successful investment in Africa. And what's coming out of some of these studies is that we find that to be successful in African investment is something that doesn't always happen immediately. That there is a large failure rate of investment in agriculture due to many reasons, but the reason that came through the most strongly was lack of an accurate business plan. And that many of the investments that the World Bank had studied, which had failed, was due to, if you like, poor planning and poor assessments of benefit and risk at the plant stage. And where we did see successful investments, it was where an investor perhaps had already invested in an investment that had previously gone bankrupt and failed. And this was happening for many investments, that successful investments were only possible when the investor didn't have to carry the large capital costs the other lesson that was coming through from that session was the importance of partnership between smallholders, between the private sector, between government, between government advisors, and uh, with the civil society. I think the one of the lessons coming through was that the the investment for smallholders is not going to work unless you've got that that partnership between all those actors uh, operating smoothly. Going back to the beginning of our conversation here. You know, the whole uh, conference being in Japan and uh, how Japan positions itself. From all what you just said, is there a particular role that uh, Japan came forward in, in all this that, uh, that you could see? I think where there was uh, evidence of involvement of, of Japan, and we saw that, in example, in the support that they're giving to rice research and rice production. Uh, and there were, I attended the side event on the the uh, the rice development and rice support that Japan is giving. But the room was absolutely packed, standing room only, and it wasn't uh, donors. It was full of 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 the African participants of TCAD discussing rice production in Africa. And I think the question was coming from or the, coming from the audience was. They wanted to see more Japanese support, and not just financial, technical. I mean, there was a, a, a very interesting side session, side discussion, on the importance of using laser levels to ensure a level uh, production of paddy, which ensures an adequate and equal distribution of water across the paddy field. Something that the Japanese are was extremely skilled in. And there was evidence of, of where this was being applied in African irrigated rice cultivation and how Africans were taking up that technology. And I saw this in other side events as well in terms of support to 
uh, uh, Sivani from Uganda, again, calling for more investment in infrastructure, in roads, in railways, in water supply, in electrification. I think many uh, African participants saw Japan as, as being uh, able to give support and investment uh, for that. Thank you very much. Thanks very much, Pascal. Pleasure to talk to you.